In this video, we'll go over two fragrances that were released in 2021, red and blue from the Icon line of Dunhill. If you're interested, stay tuned and let's see if those two hold up. Hey everyone, it's Peter from Centrail. On this channel, we talk about fragrances, designers, niche, perfumers, so on and so forth. So if you're into fragrances or you just wanna smell great, considering love, like, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things that support the channel. I wanna thank you in advance. And now let's dive right into our new fragrances from Dunhill. Dunhill's been around for about, I don't know, 130 years almost. They've done everything from clocks to leather, to saddles, to tobacco, all the way into fragrances. Now the first fragrance from Dunhill was released somewhere around the 1930s, I think 1934 was the first one. And as, at this point, they only have one female fragrance. The most of them are men, men's fragrances. So I apologize, ladies. Some of them you could probably wear uh, if you're you know, adventurous in fragrances. Now there are about, I think 40 fragrances to choose from from Dunhill. And one of their most recent releases is from uh, a line called Dunhill Icon and then there's a later one that was called Racing in the Icon line and these two that we're looking at today from 2021 are flankers of the 2021 or of the Racing line from the Icon line. Now of course we're not going to go through all of them I mean the original line that was out there um, from the Icon or yeah the Icon line are these right here and I think that was one more in there uh, it was the green one, and that's the racing line. Now, we're not going to go through all these right here. I have an earlier video. I will link it in the top if you're interested in, in the original Icon line. But today, you know, they came out with new ones from 2021, and that's the ones we're going to look at today. Now, the original ones, uh, they had, they, when you open them, first of all, these bottles are great. They're really heavy, nice little heft to it, nice little click. Um, they were just kind of all one color. There was nothing else to it. Now, when they came up with that first racing one, which is the green one, they added a racing stripe to it. Now, as you'll see with the uh, flankers of this racing one, they also have racing stripes on it. So you can identify that pretty easily. The original racing one was released in 2017. It also had notes of grapefruit, lavender. There's also some Gaiac wood in the original racing one. And I have to say that I really enjoy the original racing from 2017. It's a great wear and it has sort of medium projection and medium longevity. It's a really good one. And I really enjoy wearing that one. So I'm eager to see what the new ones will smell like. The new one from 2021, there's a blue and there's a red. Yeah, the blue one looks like this. It's the same shape as the original Icon ones. The bottle is equally as heavy. They didn't change anything up too much. And if you open it up, you can see there's also a stripe on here indicating that it is from the racing line. The interesting part about this one is that it is also a citrus aromatic. What they did in this one though, they added some marine notes into it. And that is achieved by adding sea salt is the only thing that I could find that would hint towards a marine note. At the top of this fragrance, Dunhill Icon Racing Blue, you have familiar notes like lime, bergamot. There's also some ambroxan at the very top. Now at this point, it already starts sounding a little bit familiar in the past few years. Lime, bergamot, and ambroxan seem to be one of the stars of the past few years. In the middle then you have coriander, you have neroli, you have some cardamom, and of course the sea salt like I mentioned earlier. Well, it's starting to sound a little bit familiar. In the bottom, or in the base notes of this fragrance, you then have some drift and sandalwood, you also have some ambergris, and you have some patchouli. It is a pleasant smelling scent although it seems like it's just a bit familiar. Now, I don't have to tell you as fragrance connoisseurs out there that this one, there is a plethora of fragrances that smell in the same direction as this one. And there's a couple of fragrances that come to mind when I smell this fragrance or when I wore this fragrance, actually. In my opinion, I, I think that the uh, blue fragrances are kind of a little bit tired and they're just a little bit overdone. 
Me personally, I'm ready for something new. But that being said, there is in no way or in no way is this one a bad scent. It smells actually quite nice. And it has, just like the other ones, sort of average, medium projection and longevity. The entire time I was wearing this fragrance, I kind of felt like the fragrance was trying to do something or change into something that it was clearly not. Now you're probably wondering, what does that mean? Well, to me, I felt like there were a couple of fragrances that are in this fragrance or hints of this fragrance that it reminded me of. And one of them is that it smells a lot or in the line of, of course, one of the favorite blue ones, you know, and it is Blue de Chanel. It has hints of that in there. It is a blue fragrance. But then while I was wearing this fragrance, I felt like it was trying to become sweeter or it was trying to take a turn somewhere. It didn't quite make it. Uh, and I did find that there were hints, and get this, of Dolce & Gabbana, the one. Now, it was kind of sort of fighting a little bit for each other. Now, both of these are really good scents and I think they did a decent job in trying to com you know, combine really good sellers uh, in uh, Dunhill Blue. However, I wish it would have had its own identity. I wish they wouldn't have tried to do something that's been around for a little bit you know, already. Uh, it is a good fragrance, but you know, having the originals of Dolce & Gabbana, actually that's the Eau de Parfum, I have the EDT back here, um, or the Blue de Chanel, you know, the EDT. Um, I think I would rather wear the originals and not really go with something that is kind of in the middle there somewhere. I find hints of either one of those in Dunhill Blue. However, the scent's easy to wear. Um, it smells nice. It's a little bit uh, on the softer side of things. And I think that you could wear uh, the Dunhill Blue in the summer and well into the colder months. Not too cold, but it does have a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of weight to it. But, you know, let's move on. Let's move on to the other one that was released and it's the Dunhill Red. Uh, and I'll promise you, I'll give you a little summary of what I think about these fragrances at the end. Dunhill Red is also a citrus aromatic. It comes in a red flacon like this. And what they did in this one is they added some solar notes and you have some orange and you have some mandarin that lead the way in this one. And if you look at it, you can also tell that there is a racing stripe right in the center here, just like they did in the green and just like they did, I guess, in the blue. So you got, see the racing stripes? I don't have them quite straight, but apologize. In Dunhill Racing Red, like I said, the orange and the mandarin will lead the way as you open it or as you first spray it. You'll also have some um, solar notes at the very beginning, which give this one a little bit of a, a lightness to it. But this one, as well as the other one, smell very reminiscent or very familiar to another fragrance. Actually, this one doesn't click as much as the other one. It has a lighter click on it. I picked this one up earlier and it fell. Uh, not because I dropped it, but because I thought it was snug on here, but it actually, all the other ones are very snug, this one's not. So kind of be careful if you get one. Uh, I don't know, maybe they, maybe it's worn out, I don't know. <laughs> also, what you find at the top of this, so we had the mandarin, we had the orange, we had the uh, solar notes. You also have some pedigrain, some black pepper. You also have some grapefruit in the Dunhill Icon Racing Red. Um, those are all the top notes. And then once you go into the middle, you'll have some fern, you have some geranium, olibanum, uh, and more pepper in the middle. So there's also some pepper at the top. So it, there's, you know, you have the orange and the solar notes. And there is a, a good amount of pepper in this fragrance, which once again, you know, maybe you've already guessed it, it reminds you of something else. And then in the base, when we get to this, the base of this fragrance, we end up with some cedar, we have some amber, we have some vetiver, and we have some moss. There's also some tonka bean in the base of this fragrance. 
And then, you know, the longevity and protection is just like all the other ones, sort of on the medium side. Yes, yes, I know. It's unfortunate that both of these fragrance remind us of something that's already out there. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because the fragrance that Dunhill Icon Racing Red reminds me of is actually not a bad one. And it is none other than Versace Eros Flame. These, even with the colors, are very, very similar to each other. Now they don't smell identical, but this one definitely reminded me immediately of Eros Flame from Versace. Now in its defense, if you, you know, for some reason think that Eros Flame, you know, is too strong, it's too sweet, uh, it is a more projecting fragrance. I mean, this fragrance lasts for hours and it is, you know, a really good clubbing fragrance. If you like that sort of scent profile, but you don't want to go quite as loud, then I think Dunhill icing, uh, Dunhill icing, I think Dunhill Racing Red is a really good choice. It is softer and all the edges are rounded out. So it is a little bit more, it's got a classier vibe to it. Now, is it, you know, uh, something for a mature man, older, etc. you know, not really. I think anybody can wear this. I think that this fragrance is probably even a good bit unisex in my, to my nose. Like I said, take arrows, file off the edges, and you'll have Dunhill Icon Red. Now, I promised you I would give you a little summary towards the end. Well, if you don't have the predecessors, you know, if you don't have any of the Chanel's or you're new in the fragrance game or you don't have that many, then I think that the Dunhill Red and Blue are a good choice. They're a decent performer, they, you know, they project pretty well and they smell really nice. However, for the price that you can, that you at this point buy these for, I believe they run somewhere between 100 and 130 dollars. I think that you just should go out and get the originals. You know, if you're going to spend that kind of money, go get Eros Flame, go get, you know, Blue de Chanel, the EDT or the EDP. EDP is my favorite. Or get the Dolce Gabbana, the one, you know, or get the EDP like this one. If you're going to spend somewhere around $100. You know, I would wait until the Dunhill red and blue are on sale at the online sellers and you'll probably be able to get it for you know 70 60 50 30 dollars maybe not 30 dollars but you know 70 60 50 dollars pretty soon i would imagine i would wait and get them there you know the bottles are great they look great on the shelf you know and let's see we didn't check the sprayer let's do a spray and see, let you see what the sprayers are like so this is the blue right here You know, they have a decent spray and it, it's not a bad scent, but I would definitely wait until they come down in price just a little bit. So I guess in short, if you have the other ones already and you, you know, you have a little bit of a collection, then the blue or the red are going to be redundant for you. Me personally, I don't think that I'm going to see or, or that I'm going to be wearing these a lot at all. I have, you know, hundreds of fragrances, so I'm, I'm probably not going to be wearing these uh, a lot. I was hoping that it would be a unique, newer scent, something just a little bit more inventive, but they're not. So I bought these two, you know, because I already have the other ones to kind of complete the Icon uh, collection, and of course, to do a review for you guys. But you know as well as I do, whether times and noses change. And maybe I'll feel different about these after I've worn them a few times. Until then, I want you to take good care of yourself. Always smell nice. If you got anything out of this at all, please do consider love, like, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things that support the channel. I want to thank you in advance. Until next time, Centrail.